The Lord heard and had mercy on me. The Lord became my helper. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We have guessed. You all finally decided to come back to school. What did you do, run out of dead presidents to celebrate this week? It's good to see you guys, all right? So as we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, <coughs> all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Show gracious favor, O Lord, we pray, to the works of penance we have begun, that we, may, that we may have strength to accomplish with sincerity the bodily observance we undertake. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, cry out full-throated and unsparingly. Lift up your voice like a trumpet blast. Tell my people their wickedness and the house of Jacob their sins. <clears throat> the seek me, they seek me day after day and desire to know my ways, like a nation that has done what is just and not abandoned their law of their God. They ask me to declare what is due them, pleased to gain access to God. Why do we fast and you do not see it? Afflict ourselves and you take no note of it. Lo, on your first day you carry out your own pursuits and drive all your laborers. Yes, on your fast ends in quarreling and fighting, striking with wicked claw. Would that today you might fast so as you make your voice heard on high. Is this the manner of the fasting I wish of keeping a day of penance? that a man bow his, bow his head like a reed and lie in sackcloth and ashes. Do you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? This rather is the fasting that I wish, releasing those bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the pro oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. Then you lie shall break forth like the dawn, and you wound shall quickly be healed. The vegetation shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer you. Cry for help, and he will say, Here I am, the word of the Lord. The response is, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. A heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. For I acknowledge my offense and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. For, your, for you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is contrite spirit. A heart contrite and humble, O God, you will not spurn. A heart contrite and humble, O God.
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Seek good and not evil so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good morning. Well, today we have this beautiful reading from the prophet Isaiah, where the people are gathering to offer sacrifice. And they're doing it in such a way that it's bringing glory to them and not glory to God. It's all about what they can do and see how important I am. And the Lord reminds them that that's not the way to do it. If we truly want to be repentant, then we need to do exactly what he says. Uh, release the bound unjustly, untying the thongs of the yoke, setting free the oppressed, breaking every yoke, sharing your bread with the hungry, sheltering the oppressed and the homeless, clothing the naked when you see them, and not turning your back on your own. And he says, when you'll do that, then your light will shine. And then we have our gospel today where John's disciples approach Jesus and talk about fasting as well. And the Pharisees and John's disciples all fast quite nicely and quite uh, succinctly. But Jesus' disciples, they seem to be partying all the time. And he basically says to them, why should one fast when God is in your midst? Why should one fast? when God is in your midst. I won't be here much longer. Not me, Jesus. And he wants them to realize that when he's gone, things aren't going to be quite as nice as they are today. That they are going to have to suffer. They are going to have to sacrifice. And some of them, it's going to cost their very lives to follow Jesus. And I think the message for us today is how much are we willing to follow Jesus? Now, through the sacrament of the Eucharist, he abides with us always. But when we leave this church, after receiving communion, or after receiving the grace that flows through the Eucharist, we're called to go out into the world and to be different. Not to be the same person that we came in here, but somebody who's been enlightened, somebody who knows the truth, somebody who realizes that there are people still being held unjustly, <clears throat> that there are still people who are hungry, that there are still people who are naked, there are still people who are thirsty. And whatever we can do to alleviate those problems, we are called to do. Again, not to bring any, any glory to ourselves, but to point the glory to God. And we can do that each and every day of our lives in the most simplest of ways. Perhaps you see one of your fellow students who's having a bad day. Maybe somebody's made fun of them. Maybe somebody's picked on them. Maybe nobody will play with them. What do you do? Do you go along with all the other quote-unquote disciples and treat them the same way? Or do you reach out in kindness and empathy, and compassion, and mercy, and unite yourselves with them. For us adults, we do the same. How many times do we see people that we really don't want to interact with? My father used to have a joke, and he'd, somebody would say, I'll see you later. And he'd say, not if I see you first. And it was a joke. But sometimes that's the way we act. Oh my God, here comes so-and-so. I don't want to have to interact with them. I'll go the other way. I'll cross the street. I'll turn my head. I'll duck into the store. 
That's not being a Christian. Being a Christian means that we accept all people, wherever they are in life. Now, it doesn't mean that we accept what they do, just like God doesn't always accept what we do, but we treat them with compassion and mercy because we don't know what life they've led. We don't know how many trials and tribulations they've been bearing. We have no idea of the cross that they have to carry. But we all know our own trials. We all know our own tribulations. We all know our own crosses. And we want people just to help and to share, uh, share with us to alleviate our stress. Are we ready to do the same for others? Because again, whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. And this Lent, we've just begun. We haven't even made it through this little halfway week of, of Lent. Let's recommit ourselves of caring for one another. Let us recommit ourselves of speaking up for one another. Let us recommit ourselves to being Christ to one another. Let us recommit ourselves of truly being disciples of Jesus Christ. Please stand. And now let us turn and offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For all the members of the church, may God draw us even closer to himself during this Lenten season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and all those in authority, may God guide them in governing with wisdom and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with mental illness, may God's healing grace come upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may the Holy Spirit enkindle us in us a fire for the corporal works of mercy during this Lenten season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rejoice with God in their eternal home in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of John Farmer Sr., for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we offer our prayers to you this day. Fill us with the grace of the Holy Spirit, that we may truly be witnesses to your love in the world. And we ask this through Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For you do the vine and work of human hands, become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, Wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer, O oh Lord, the sacrifice of our Lenten observance, praying that it may make our intentions acceptable to you and add to our powers of self-restraint. Through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat... Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, <clears throat> that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O Lord, make me know your ways. Teach me your paths. What we'll do today is let's get the more advanced in age people first, and then we'll get the younger people, all right?
And let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that through partaking of this sacred mystery, we may be cleansed of all our misdeeds and so be suited for the remedies of your compassion through Christ our Lord. All right, kids, why don't we do this at the end of Mass? You all stay here until all the adults get out of the church, and then you all can clean up your pews and take off as well. All right? All right, everybody, have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. And if we don't see you before, we'll see you this weekend at Mass. And now, if you would, please bow your heads. For your mighty deeds, O God of mercy, may your people offer endless thanks. And by observing the age old disciplines among their pilgrim journey, may they merit to come and behold you forever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Your protection is the witness and snares of the devil. May God be eternal and humbly pray, and do thou the prince of angels, by the power of God, thrust in hell, Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls.